Become the ultimate beastmaster by turning your friends into ferocious, fuzzy comrades with animal shapes. Right for D&D shenanigans and with loosely written spell verbiage, Druids have the ability to break the game. I'm John, Forever DM and Encounter Writer at DumbestDnd.com, and today we're looking at a shape-changing spell in D&D 5e, Animal Shapes. It's an 8th level transmutation spell that lasts for 24 hours as long as the caster is able to concentrate. This is a high level druid spell that costs one action and only affects willing creatures, but does so in a 30 foot radius, meaning you could technically transmute over 100 creatures if you had the attention span for it. Incredibly fun and incredibly powerful, let's take a look at what animal shapes can do for you by going through the rules as written. Before we do, drop your questions about animal shapes in the comments below and we'll be sure to get them answered. Rules as written. Your magic turns others into beasts. I know this is flavor text, but also calling out it says others, so no casting it on yourself. The druid has wild shape anyway, so don't at me in the comments. Choose any number of willing creatures that you can see within range. Any number. Not one, not two. Any number within range. You just need line of sight, and the creatures must be within 30 feet. The creature must also be willing, meaning most likely your allies. If you're leading a small battalion of soldiers, you could transmute them all into giant snapping turtles and wreak some major havoc. You transform each target into the form of a large or smaller beast with a challenge rating of 4 or lower. If we're burning that 8th level spell slot, it better be up to a large size beast. Important too, it is specific to a creature type of beast and CR 4 or less. By our count, that's over 100 beasts from official books though Giant Coral Snake from Ghosts of Saltmarsh is the only CR4 beast at the time of this recording. Many people point to elephants, but those are huge beasts, need beasts, and beasts that are large or smaller. On subsequent turns, you can use your action to transform affected creatures into new forms. If you advance far enough with Turtle Squadron, you could turn them all into giant eagles with one action. Rules as written, it gives no range for this portion, just affected creatures rules as intended, they should probably still be within 30 feet. The transformation lasts for the duration for each target or until the target drops to zero hit points or dies. Turtle Squadron is good to go for 24 hours or until you, the druid, drop concentration with the spell. More on hit points in a moment. You can choose a different form for each target. They don't all have to be giant snapping turtles, you could get an insane mashup of animals going though it would start to become a nightmare to run at the table for both player and DM. A target's game statistics are replaced by the statistics of the chosen beast, though the target retains its alignment and intelligence, wisdom, and charisma scores. So strength, dex, and con become those of the beasties, while the targets still get to be the same levels of smart. It's a good thing, since most beasts are of lower intelligence. The target assumes the hit points of its new form, and when it reverts to its normal form, it returns to the number of hit points it had before it transformed. Wild shape for everyone. The affected creature is essentially given a second hit point bar when transforming. And if we keep the giant snapping turtle example, that means they now have 75 HP on top of whatever they were at. When the turtle gets toppled, the creature goes back to whatever HP they were at prior. That second health bar is amazing. It reverts as a result of dropping to zero hit points. Any excess damage carries over to its normal form. Standard carryover rules here. Turtle has 10, takes 15. Turtle form goes away and regular form takes 5 damage. As long as the excess damage doesn't reduce the creature's normal form to zero hit points, it isn't knocked unconscious. Thumbs up. Straightforward and understandable. The creature is limited in the actions it can perform by the nature of its new form, and it can't speak or cast spells. Wild Shape continues here with the traditional rulings. The creatures themselves cannot communicate through words, but if you've planned this out beforehand, they should know what they're doing. The target's gear melds into the new form. Love this for you because it means you don't have to worry about where your stuff goes, like a built-in fur fanny pack. It just becomes a part of your beast body. The target can't activate, wield, or otherwise benefit from any of its equipment. Makes sense since it is now part of your beast body. And there you go, raw in a turtle shell. From the initial review, raw seems pretty clear overall in this spell. It's wild shape for all of your friends. Not so fast though. What happens to the extra health bar if you go from turtle to eagle mid-fight? There doesn't seem to be any direct rule around this, but there are likely a few directions to take your ruling. 
we see three rulings you could go with. First is percentage ruling. If you're at 50 out of 75 HP as a giant snapping turtle and change to a giant eagle, DMs could rule your percentage health of 66% carries over to the new form, so 18 out of 26. Otherwise, for 24 hours, you could sit back and become the master of all buffs and none of your party members can die. To really spam it, you could keep going back and forth between giant snapping turtle, giant coral snake, and a plesiosaurus. If you get full health for those animals, you're essentially getting endless minions for a full day. Second, and in most cases the correct answer, is a new health bar. An argument I like for new health bars for each shift is that a druid will already need to be level 15 or higher to cast a spell. At that point, most baddies are going to be able to drop a less than CR4 creature pretty quickly, so it might be fair for a new health bar. I mean, this is demigod level magic at this point. Jeremy Crawford says this is the way it should be, so best decide with the all-knowing. A third and least likely option is current HP transfers to new creature on the change, but that turns into an administrative nightmare and would be the least fun. RPG Bot makes a good point in their overview of animal shapes as well, that when a creature is knocked out of their animal form, you could shift them back in the very next turn, going as far to say because there's no rule to restrict this to non-dying creatures, if a character is dying, you could transform them, resetting their death saves. Probably against rules as intended, but the DM reigns supreme. All things to think about. In Raw, I talked a lot about using animal shapes in a military setting, where you can get the most bang for your buck by having every space in the radius filled. 131, depending on how your DM plays it, and minus one for the space you take up. Double that if creatures stand on each other's shoulders, and now you've got 262 wild-shaped individuals. Congrats on winning the war. Outside of high volume animal shape, leverage animal shapes to hinder your foes. A stealth mission or heist that requires everyone to be a rat for a little bit. Animal shapes will cover you for 24 hours, but no one could talk or defend themselves initially. Maybe you all need to be sheep to get put on a truck and secretly enter a city. You might be able to get away with some illusion magic, but animal shapes gives you the physical presence and pomp of a real sheep. You could also turn your friends into stench cows to help ward off foes by smell alone, or a raucous group of rhinos capable of laying down and damming a river. Animal shape is not only a combat tool, but could be a great problem-solving tool for puzzles and environmental hazards. As a few folks have pointed out over the years, the best cheese of this spell is to be a spore druid with access to animate dead. After unaliving some of your foes, reanimate them and then cast animal shapes to have a whole new group of cannon fodder. Or maybe have, as someone, Zoltar99 put it, a huge stampede of rampaging awakened white moose at your command. A similar use I saw that I appreciate and would likely rule against was to use staff of swarming insects to cast insect cloud, then with the massive cloud of insects, which technically are tiny beasts, cast animal shapes and turn them all into something massive. Hundreds to thousands of beasts unleash chaos for 10 minutes, the length of the insect cloud itself. Debatable whether a swarm of insects are considered allies because they are just insects and aren't very smart. Conjuring or summoning also make this spell a bit crazy, so the druid could wreck your entire game if you let them. The last cheese comes from RPG Bot, where they note you could always carry a bag of rats with you. Technically, animal friendship could be cast 18 times in a day and last for 24 hours, so you could convince 18 rats to get into a bag, take them into battle, and unleash 18 rats that you transmute into giant scorpions or giant poisonous snakes. Animal Shapes first appears in 3rd edition, where the spell allowed for you to change one willing creature per caster level. So a bit of a limitation there, and 3rd edition was clear that all creatures must take the same kind of animal form. This is boring. 5th edition decided the spell level is so high that they don't care what you do, <laughs> and opened up a chaos portal for you to run all the shenanigans you want. Animal Shapes is a spell that offers a lot of opportunities for fun and creativity. As it is limited to the druid only, we see this as a higher tier spell because it is chaotic, powerful, and specific. Happy shaping. And for those of you looking for the best beasts that you can find here, you could get a CR4 large beast, including the giant coral snake from Ghost Saltmarsh, 
a CR3 large beast, which includes the giant snapping turtle from Tomb of Annihilation, the bristled moor bounder from Wildemont, the awakened white moose from Rime of the Frost Maiden, and of course the giant scorpion. We've added a link to the spreadsheet of all beasts you could leverage with animal shapes, but let us know below if we're missing any. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, be sure to check out dumbestdnd.com for all the latest free encounters that we have to offer.